the zine made by us and for us is back. We're leading a cultural revolution. For over a decade, the immigrant youth at Power United We Dream have disrupted the public expectations of what it means to be an immigrant. So for this volume, we've brought together another multiracial group of proud immigrant writers and artists who believe in the inherent worth and dignity of immigrants. The zine made by us and for us is back. We're leading a cultural revolution. For over a decade, the immigrant youth at Power United We Dream have disrupted the public expectations of what it means to be an immigrant. So for this volume, we've brought together another multiracial group of proud immigrant writers and artists who believe in the inherent worth and dignity of immigrants. The zine made by us and for us is back. We're leading a cultural revolution. For over a decade, the immigrant youth at Power United We Dream have disrupted the public expectations of what it means to be an immigrant. So for this volume, we've brought together another multiracial group of proud immigrant writers and artists who believe in the inherent worth and dignity of immigrants. The zine made by us and Good evening and good afternoon, everyone. My name is Shetty Van. I use they, them pronouns. I am the arts and culture change strategist for United We Dream. We are the largest immigrant youth-led organization in the country. And tonight I'm joined by two very special guests as we present to you um, a little bit of the behind the scenes for our immigrant made zine. I'm joined tonight by Trudy and by Aleje. Trudy, how are you doing? I'm doing well, thank you. Happy to be here. <laughs> That's great to hear. And Aleje, how are you today? I'm, I'm really good and I'm excited to be here and to share a little bit of the, the work that we have been doing. Awesome. I'm really amazing. It's, it's such a pleasure to have you both here with, with us tonight on today's live stream. Um, so for those of you who are tuning in, today we're going to be talking about Immigrant Made Zine. Now, some of y'all may have heard about the zine before. We had the very first one released. Oh, there we go with that blur. We had the very first one released last fall. And in this summer, we released volume two, which features another five amazing writers and another seven uh, illustrators that joined us to create this zine that's jam-packed with poems, stories, and personal essays. Tonight um, on this live stream, we're gonna be talking with our special guests about how they contributed to the zine, what were some of their thought processes as they were creating it, and what were some of the inspirations that were driving them as, we, as they created this, um, this you know, collection of writing. If you have any question for any questions for our guests tonight, you can drop them in the chat and we'll make sure to send them over their way. So a little bit about the zine before we dive in. So like I mentioned, Immigrant Made. 
Immigrant Made is a zine that's all about featuring the pride for our immigrant identities and our immigrant communities. We are an amazingly talented and a wide spanning range of people in this community coming from all kinds of backgrounds. And in Immigrant Made, what we really wanted to highlight were the special traditions, the love, the care that our communities have for each other as immigrant people. And at United We Dream, storytelling has always been a big part of what has allowed us to create change, changing people's hearts mm -hmm. and minds. And with Immigrant Made, we're asking for you, the reader, to also join us in creating and defining immigrant culture alongside us. So as you listen in tonight, as you ponder about how you can, you know, continue to expand your own understanding of your identity, of self-love, we hope that you also bring some of these ideas into your everyday life and get your hands on with writing and art. So let's go ahead and dive into introducing our very first special guest for today, Aleje. So I'm gonna share a little bit of their uh, bios before we dive right in. All right, here we go. So Aleje Martinez is a gorgeous non-binary poet and student living in Prescott, Arizona, where they attend Prescott College. Their work weaves language, trauma, and displacement into a trenza, a braid of radical self-love. Alex published Disclosure, Confessions of a Queer in Crisis in 2018, and their second book, Concealment, was released in 2021 by La Resistencia Press. Alex is a DACA recipient who migrated from the Nahua lands, now known as Veracruz, Mexico. Thank you so much for joining us, Aleje. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. And uh, we're so excited to have you here joining us to talk about your contributions to the immigrant made scene. And, um, you know, I know that you created a personal essay for this back in uh, 2021 when we were putting together yeah. the stories. Um, talk to us a little bit about uh, what, what your essay is about. Yeah, um, first I wanna say thank you to United with Dream for gathering um, an amazing group of people, artists, um, writers, uh, to just celebrate ourselves and, and our work. And um, yeah, I, it was 2021. And I remember it's so full circle because I remember, you know, listening from Cheridan and saying like, we were trying to make this happen. And here we are making it happen. And it's super exciting to be here. Um, you know, in 2020, we uh, were uh, hit by this uh, global pandemic. And in 2021, um, which seems like so many lives ago, I wanted to write something about it. I wanted to um, write about um, radical self-love and use kind of like the situation, which is a really bad situation that I was in, um, not just me, but my family and my whole community and the whole world, uh, truly. And so I wanted to write about how in really um, dark times, there's still moments where you can find time to love yourself, to understand that there's so many things uh, that are happening externally, but uh, it's always good to check in with yourself internally and to um, celebrate what's in there. What, what, what is the joy that you can find within yourself? And what are the things that you can do for yourself um, to find that joy and to and to um, really just um, keep loving yourself because it's a process. <laughs> definitely, definitely. And I and I saw you going through um, a process of your own, too, as you were writing this piece. I remember that you went through a few different dr uh, drafts with your mentors at the Writer Skills Initiative and shout out to all of them, all of our amazing mentors who helped our, our writers to craft their pieces. Um, Aleje, uh, would you do us the honor of reading yeah. either you know, some portions of your essay or if you, if you would like to share the entire piece, uh, the floor is all yours. Thank you so much. And I do want to say, yeah, exactly. Shout out to all the editors, ed editors including Shetty, who was one of the editors of this piece. 
Um, thank you so much for uh, providing so much uh, guidance. And uh, I think this piece turned out to, to, to be exactly what I wanted it to be. I didn't know that at the time, but when it, when it was over, when it was published, uh, I, um, I think that I, I left a lot of love and guilt and pain in it. Um, and that's exactly what I needed to do. Um, I'm gonna read some excerpts from it. Uh, you can find, uh, you can read it yourself on the zine uh, or uh, online uh, as well. Um, but this piece is uh, called Go. I am exhausted and running out of gas, but friends want a selfie. The sign behind me says, welcome to Arizona. And I can't help but wonder if I'm really welcome. Midwestern states were a blur. 2020 was a blur. One that sneaks up on, on me during warm mornings, provoking violent heaviness and thoughts of sweaty summer days on a lonely third floor balcony, gasping for new air hoping it will reach my decaying lungs. I am driving west on Interstate 40 and I have no idea where I'm going. My mother struggles to breathe from a hospital bed, but she says, go in between those breaths and I do. Navajo land approaches and fields of yellow greet me in the distance. I am grieving so many things. I wish I had the time to process, process these emotions, but I just want to forever get lost in these fields of hope. It's sometime in August, and I'm beginning to think that I lost July in my lungs. What is time anyways? It's been only a few days since you died, and I can't see a motorcycle that doesn't remind me of us riding along the ocean when I was just 13. At the hospital, you made friends with the nurses, and after everything you were going through, you made them laugh because you knew that we all deserve that. You taught me that. In our last conversation, you told me you loved me and joke about your own life, revealing that you knew that this was the end of the road. Three days ago, mom woke up. The following day, she watched you die. The phone clutched in her hand her audible tears reaching me through the phone. Now you're gone and I am leaving. A week ago, my life consisted of waking up and struggling to walk around and feed myself. Days felt like months alone in that empty apartment on the third floor. The electricity in my chest prevented me from talking, but I would call the hospital every day and ask for you both. Time has been suspended since then. I find myself staring at the dirty mirror behind me. I see my friends and I feel protected. I smile for the first time since Kansas while Ziza plays loudly in the car. Seven months later, I will be sitting on a granite rock on Thumb Butte Road, looking at the mountains and Ponderosa trees, listening to the Jays. I will feel the closest to you. It will be April's Fool's Day, your birthday, and you will be 44. I will think of the last summer, how I think about your life, warm, tragic, and unforgettable. I will call my mother as often as I can, and sometimes we will just hear each other breathe. In those moments, silence will feel right. Her breathing is a sign of life. And I am content with that. A small ocean forms in my face. I am uncertain of everything. But as I drive into the unknown, I know that I will be okay. The forest hugs the road and I pull myself back to reality. Leaving my family was difficult. Lost, almost prevented it. But I trusted the ones that I love and they carried me here. I feel at home wherever I feel this joy. I am grateful to be alive. I'm still on the road, but I know exactly where I'm going. Thank you. 
Thank you so much, Aleje, for that really deeply personal essay that you shared about this experience that you went through. I think, you know, for all of our folks who read this piece, one of the things that uh, really uh, sticks out is this, this transformation that you experience on this journey going out west. Um, talk to us a little bit about, you know, where, uh, why it was so important for you to bring forth this positivity, this transformation in this, in this essay that you shared. Yeah, I, it was, it, it, yeah, first I want to acknowledge that, like, it was a really tough time um, during, you know, August of 2020. Uh, my mother was in a coma. She had just woken up. Um, my uncle died, you know, the following day. And it was a struggle for me to, and I had just, you know, I had decided that spring uh, to go to college at 30 years old. You know, I didn't have the opportunity to go to college right after high school because of being undocumented and living in a locked out state. And so to me, it was the time I, I had prepared, I had planned, I got a full ride scholarship. I was ready to go. And all of this happened right before I was about to leave. And I called my mom and I, you know, you know, when she was awake and I said, you know, you've been asleep for 18 days. Um and I'm supposed to leave this week. I don't know what to do. Um, and she said, you know, if you stay here, you're never going to leave. And so when she said go, those words were really powerful to me because I, um, I have always preached about self-love, about, you know, taking care of ourselves. Uh, and, you know, everything goes out, you know, all of those things go out the window when your family or when your loved ones are sick and when they're going through to the struggles. And so uh, that kind of like just, you know, her saying go, which is kind of giving me permission to allow myself to do things for me and to uh, to to find to find the love in myself to 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 walk away and to walk away from the situation and know that they were going to be OK without me. Um, and so it was, it was hard to leave and it was hard to write this piece because, uh, there was a lot of guilt, uh, in leaving. But, uh, as I mentioned in the, in the piece, uh, the following April, I felt so, um, calm, uh, and it, it truly was a transformation. Um, I left the community I loved. I left my family. I left all the you know, all the access to resources that I had there. And I started to build a new community. But, you know, uh, one thing about immigrants is that we are resourceful and we're resilient. And so I was finding, you know, ways to, to still love myself and still be okay with not being in the place that I have always been. So there was definitely a transformation that happened through this process. That's really incredible. Thank you so much, Aleje, for sharing, you know, everything that you were going through and how you, you know, were able to bring those experiences and put that from, you know, pen, put it that from pen to paper. And now, you know, have this really, uh, really beautiful piece that's presented in this um, yeah. collage form. Um, I want to give a, a quick shout out to Felix Quintana uh, from Los Angeles. Felix is a visual artist, photographer, and an educator. Uh, they put together this beautiful uh, collage using some of your photos, is that yeah. right? Uh, yeah. Tell me a little bit more about those photos that uh, folks will find in the zine. Yeah, so I, um, first of all, yes, uh, incredible work by Felix. They were, uh, as soon as I realized that I got paired up with them, I looked them up and I got so excited because their work is amazing. Everybody's, every artist on this uh, two scenes, uh, two volumes are incredible. And I was so excited to be paired up, paired up with someone else who like, um, who I didn't have to explain my piece to, who immediately understood what I was trying to say and who like has a, you know somewhat of a similar story. Uh, and so uh, Felix uh, was like, you know, I'm trying to do a collage and this is like kind of like how it's gonna look. And, and they were like, you know, are there any photos that mean in something to you that are related to these piece? And I was like, you know what? I documented the whole process. I documented, you know, uh, uh, when I was uh, leaving, 
Kansas City to when I got to Prescott, Arizona, I documented through photos and uh, here are all the photos that I that I took. And so they were amazing just putting all those together and creating such a such a beautiful piece that just like just, you know, it just goes so well together with with my writing. And you can see some of the in some of the photos, you'll see some of my friends. Uh, shout out to my friends, truly, because, you know, there are some types of relationships that will literally carry you anywhere. And, you know, shout out to Zal, Natalia, uh, Anna, Victor, Nilofar, and Diana, because they drove with me all the way. They drove, you know, 12 plus 18 hours just to make sure that I was, you know, emotionally okay. Um, because it was a roller coaster and I put them through a lot because I was a mess through through that time and they they just took me there and they spent a lot of time with me making sure I was okay making sure I was settled <laughs> and um, so shout out to them and there are some of them are in those photos. Thank you so much Aleje for sharing um, all about you know this really deep love that's within this uh, personal essay deep love within your family, um, within your community of friends, the new community that welcomed you um, on Navajo land. Um, so uh, thank you so much. And we'll return to you in a bit uh, for some more cool. questions. Um, but now we're gonna hop on over into the world of She Had a Dream, which is an essay, or sorry, a, a short story, a, a fiction short story that was written by Idalia Calles, um, who is a United We Dream member from Maryland. Uh, shout out to Vidalia. She's a Salvadoran immigrant who immigrated in 2014. She is an English undergrad who loves creative writing, and she joined United We Dream in 2017. And so her short story that she created for our zine um, is the opening story. Um, and we um, entrusted, Vidalia entrusted, the United We Dream team entrusted this really um, sweet short story uh, to illustrator Trudy, who has joined us here tonight. Uh, Trudy, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me and having me be a part of this project. I'm happy to be here. And Trudy, we want folks to know a little bit more about you. So I'm gonna share a little bit about your bio and then we'll go right into uh, talking about your, uh, your, how you created the illustrations for this short story. So folks, Trudy was born and raised in Kingston, Jamaica at the age of 16. She left everything familiar to move to the United States and pursue her dream of becoming a full-time artist. After earning her BFA in illustration at the Savannah College of Art, Trudy went on to work full-time as an illustrator and designer. Trudy has worked with clients such as Nick Jr., Penguin Random House, Rebel Girls, and more. And Trudy is a first-gen US citizen. Trudy, it was so amazing seeing Vidalia's story. Uh, I, I, I was, I remember uh, working with Vidalia uh, together on her story. And I remember how much, uh, how excited she was to be able to infuse her personal story into this, uh, into this short story. And then you just took it to another level. Um, tell us a little bit about how, uh, you know, what inspirations went into creating these illustrations. Sure, uh, can I share my screen at this of course. point? Sure, thank you. One second. Okay, is everything looking good on your end? Yes, it is. Okay, great. So it's funny that you say that Vidalia also wanted to infuse her story into this short story because I also felt like my story in a way was integrated. So I moved here when I was 16 and it was just nonstop catching up with things. I didn't know what an SAT was, what an ACT was. I remember clutching my mom and crying myself to sleep multiple times because I was saying, I'm not gonna get into college. 
I'm not going to be able to do what I want. This is so impossible. Everything was so different. And on top of the cultural shock, I also had familial issues that were happening. People who I thought were my family, you know, abandoned me. So I was really able to tap into those emotions that I may have buried for a while and chose not to process through this piece. And so being able to share the story and the doubts and the fears and uncertainty and I really just wanted to convey that as best as possible so if you look at the piece you'll see scribbles and eyes in the first spread and to me I wanted to have a representation of that doubt of that fear of that depression and the eyes really represent something that I feel like a lot of immigrants you know, lift these generational curses and, you know, do great for your family and things like that. So these eyes represent feeling watched, feeling that pressure. Um, I also used a lot of cool colors and blues and purples, you know, to represent that sadness, represent feeling down, like sad about these things and not happy. And as things progress, we can see on the right, you know, those doubts and things are just still sitting, all this paperwork, all these unknown things. I don't have this address. I don't know what to do. There's just the uncertainty, but at the turning point of the story, which I really loved and I related to is having resources and having teachers, educators to reach out to you to let you know it is possible, it, you can do it. And that weight that is clinging, you can see it kind of backing off because, and the hands reaching out to help because it really does take a community to help and it takes other people for helping. I am guilty of this. I feel like lots of people are also guilty of this, not asking for help or being ashamed. Uh, having this fear of being undocumented, this fear of being an immigrant, when if you would just speak and ask for help, and I say this, and I need to take my own advice too, you can see that it is possible to get through and to get help from others who have kind of paved the way for this to be possible, others like you who have paved the way for this to be possible. So ultimately, I wanted to end with that idea of hands uplifting, you know, bright colors, pink, Pink is my favorite color. <laughs> so I tried to squeeze it into all of my work. <laughs> and just the image of the protagonist just feeling content and happy and secure in what they're doing, feeling like they're stepping, facing forward and being able to move on. So that was my, my thought process of going through, of creating this. And it was a really great story to illustrate and um, I'm really happy that you guys entrusted me with this. Thank you so much. This was absolutely brilliant. Yes, all of the colors were so incredible. And when our team first uh, laid eyes on the final pages, we were so blown away by just how absolutely beautiful the story came to life. Um, Trudy, how did it feel like to um, you know, uh, work with another uh, immigrant writer to create this kind of piece. Um, yeah, how, how, did, how did that feel afterwards? It was really just, I don't get many opportunities to work with immigrant artists. And so to work with someone and be on a project where I'm understood on that level was just really gratifying and just just that understanding and the empathetic knowledge of doing, yeah, I get you on this level was just something really great to, to work with. And I feel like the other artists can really appreciate that to be brought in on a project like that. It was just feeling a sense of, <sighs> it was right. Yeah. Definitely, thank you. That, I, I'm so happy that you had that uh, beautiful experience um, and, you know, it, it's it's really just a joy to be able to uh, to look at the zine and to uh, encounter all of these uh, different uh, written pieces and all of these different art styles. Um, and 
Uh, for all of you folks who haven't checked out the zine yet, make sure that you check it out online at immigrantmadezine.com. You can also text uh, the keyword zine to 877-877. Um, and if you have any questions for our guests, drop them in the chat. We'll be monitoring them, but we're gonna keep going and ask some, we have some more questions for both of you. Um, and the very first thing that we want to ask you all, um, so both of the pieces that you had were very distinct, but they both centered around themes related to, to hair, whether that was, um, well, uh, a lot of self-care ha happened in both, uh, both of your stories, but there was also a lot of aspects of community care, a lot of aspects of self-love, of, of worthiness. Talk to me a little bit about what kinds of stories uh, you think that we should see going into the future that are around these things. What more things do you, would you, do you think that we need to be able to see out in the world? Um, and let's start with Trudy. Oh, sure. So I think that it's really important. I feel like there's this idea that, you know, immigrants are resourceful. We are able to rough it out. I think that we should also be able to rest and have lives of ease and be able to just enjoy things. Like it's not always hustle, work hard, trying to make it. We know we have to work hard. I mean, we already started at a disadvantage, but I feel like we're here, we're alive, we're thriving. We're trying to thrive. So I feel like really trying to carve out spaces and times to enjoy the fruits of our labor, to take rest and to be patient with ourselves. I feel like those types of stories, seeing us thrive, seeing us do things, you know, that we wouldn't expect, just having just because days, I think that is really important to share. Thank you so much, Trudy. Yes, yes to all of those things, <laughs> to rest to just taking care of ourselves. I love what you said. We already know we got to work. We already yeah. know. <laughs> Let, let's rest. Let's enjoy ourselves. I love that. Aleje, uh, what are your thoughts on this? Yeah, absolutely. Like Trudy said exactly what needs to be said. <laughs> uh, and just to add, like, I think we need to share everything. We need to share all of our stories. I think like it's not, there's not a, there's not a hierarchy of to like what we need to share. Like we need to share everything about ourselves. Um, I think to me, it was really important to, to, to show how you can find the time to love yourself. You can find the time to find joy, even in the, you know, strangest places, even in like the, you know, struggles. Uh, that you're going through. And so I think it's really important to share that. Um, there are a lot of narratives about immigrants that exist and a lot of those are out of our control. And so um, a lot of the times I wonder and I question is, is it my job to change that narrative? And like my only job is to write, to heal and to keep dancing. <laughs> and so like and everybody else you know like takes whatever they want to take from what I what I produce and so I you know I, I when I write something I don't ask myself like what am I trying to say I usually ask myself after I write it it's like what did I just say <laughs> and like and there's always a lesson for me and anyone else that reads it I'm sure thank you Aleje writing healing dancing I love that. You know, those are just some basic, uh, really great basic ingredients to have a lovely, wonderful, rich life. Thank you for sharing. The zine made by us and for us is back. We're leading a cultural revolution. For How do you balance hope and protest um, in your art and writing? How do you balance hope and protest, uh, like the sense of like uh, uh, the fighting spirit in your art and writing? So how about we start with you, Aleje? How do I balance it? Um, that is a really interesting question because to me, uh, to me, you know, I, in my own reality, I live in a world or I guess I live in a, um, in a reality where um, everything I do is a protest. 
just because of the systems that I navigate every day. So, but I also choose to choose to reframe that as like everything I do is like, uh, it, it, I find hope in everything I do because I have to, <laughs> because I have to keep moving forward and I have to reframe everything that happens to, uh, to like give me the fuel and the energy and the love and the self-love to keep moving forward. And I, and I think that just by doing that, by finding love within myself, by finding, you know, the joy that, that there is, like that is in itself is a protest. Mm -hmm. um I I think you know I and I think my friend Nilofar for always reminding me of that you know whatever we do it always goes against establishment just barely just existing in these systems is just like a, an act of active protest mm -hmm. That's but beautiful. yeah and, and just to add to that like in my writing you know like in my writing I choose to talk about trauma because we are human beings and human beings are made up by trauma <laughs> and like that is the reality of things and so uh by talking about it by writing about it by shouting singing dancing about it we're protesting mm -hmm. thank you so much Ale. and that that is so clear and evident in your writing um you know super um, direct, uh, confronting this difficult experience you had and, and all the beauty that came afterwards. Thank you, Alejen. Trudy, same question for you um, from our Facebook watchers. How do you balance hope and protest in your art? Sure. I mean, I I love everything that Alejen just said. Like, I, I echo that. I love it. Existing and sometimes it feels like just sharing our art and creating our art itself is the protest. I think when I create my mindset is I have to be true to myself first and then I'll think about everything else. So just based off of what I'm feeling at that moment, how I'm going, the past two years have been chaotic to say the least. So I am really trying to use my art as like my saving grace. So right now, I think I'm focusing more on hope, but I do have more emotional and more conceptual art that I just keep to myself because I feel like not everything has to be shared. So I think it's more about what do you want to share as an artist? What do you want to put out there? Not everything can be sunshine and roses. Like it's not always going to be hopeful because life is hard and I don't think it's fair to just share one side. But I think it really comes down to what you're feeling, what you want to put out there, and how you want to be true to yourself as an artist. Just that's the best way to balance it, I suppose. I love that so so much. You know, coming from a place of truth, I think that's a wonderful piece of advice for the, our folks listening in. And uh, for all of you um, who are watching, if you have any more questions, feel free to drop them in the chat. If you uh, have not already signed up to get a copy of the zine delivered to you, make sure to do that online. Make sure to invite your other friends, your family, your coworkers to do the same thing. Let's bring in more immigrant community members into artistic and writing spaces. Let's share the love, let's tell our stories. So, um, I'm going to uh, ask you all another uh, couple more questions while we wait to see if we have any more from our audience. Um, so, um, Trudy, this next question is for you. Um, so we have a bunch of members who um, are artists, who are writers, because immigrants are also artists. Immigrants are also writers or dancers or musicians. Um, and so for young immigrant artists who are looking to, you know, have a career that's full time as an artist, um, are there any advice or pointers that you have to share with immigrant youth? Mm -hmm. I would say don't be afraid to be vulnerable. Um, there's a lot of good art out there. There are lots of talented artists. You are one of them, but they're not you. What you're bringing to the table is your personal story, your experience, who you are. Nobody can take that from you. I know that you have, there's self-doubt, there's intrusive thoughts, there's um, imposter syndrome. I deal with imposter syndrome a lot. And I think that's very common 
in you know immigrant communities because when we get these great opportunities the, the initial thought at least for me is do I deserve this <laughs> did I get this but you're chosen and you're brought here and you create because you are creative and that is what you're meant to do so don't be afraid to put all of yourself into it don't worry about being marketable don't worry about trying to water yourself down for a wider audience be true to yourself and I promise it will work out I love that. Uh, thank you so much for, uh, you know, for sharing that really beautiful insight. Um, we, um, I have one other follow-up question. You know, what, uh, what, what is it like for you to be a, a full-time artist and having this as your, um, as your profession? Um, what, what, um, you know, what were some of the things that maybe you heard around you as you were uh, coming up and like, what, what's it like for you now? How does it feel? Right, so coming up, I saw a lot of art that didn't look like me and that didn't, made me feel like maybe this isn't something that I can do. And now being here, I think it's more about getting the right eyes on your work and getting the right people in front of your work. Like this project, for example, you know, I never in my wildest dream would think that something that would be normally like a bad thing, like, oh, an immigrant, is something that is now thriving and getting me out there and, and getting my work out there. So I think just looking back and seeing now, I, I think it's just a really beautiful transformation and seeing things, how they have progressed. Amazing. Thank you so much, Trudy. And um, we did get another question from our chat and it uh, someone asked, "Who are some of your uh, who are some of your immigrant artist heroes? Who are some of your immigrant artist heroes?" Um, and I think maybe we can expand that to like any maybe just any kind of culture uh, folks in who are culture workers, culture makers. Um, let's start with Aleje. Yeah, I. I think that there's there's a lot of artists that I really looked up to and uh, you know a lot of the people a lot of writers who who like shape like the, the type of write that I, the writing that I do and a lot of them are people who people who are listening might never heard of and like they're like community members that I that have been mentors to me and so like I would love to mention their names because they deserve that and you know, like one of the people that uh, first, like I've looked up to, uh, his name is Jose Faust. If you have the chance to Google who, who Jose Faust is, is like he's an excellent writer, muralist, artist, uh, poet. Um, another person who the poet laureate of Kansas, shout out Kansas, uh, Wascar Medina. He's just like somebody who who's writing I'm always like looking at and I'm always anxious to like see what else is he's writing because I want to read it I want to consume it I want to process it and I want to internalize it and uh you know one of the one of the first people that I ever saw like one of the first undocumented immigrant uh writers that I ever saw on like tv or or on media Jose Antonio Vargas like I I was like whoa this dude is out here. Like, let me be, let me do this shit too. Oops, sorry. Let me do this too. <laughs> and so like, there are so many writers who we don't know about uh, because we don't have those opportunities to, uh, to like, to be in like mass media. And so I think that creating those spaces is really important to like uplift these folks, uh, these artists. Totally, totally. Yes, let's keep spreading the love, getting more folks knowing about our members of our community because there's so many of us, so many of us writers, artists, chefs, right? Our community is vibrant and talented. Um, Trudy, same question for you. Who are some of your artist heroes, immigrant artist heroes? Oh, sure. So I really, so I went to school with this person. So I know heroes are supposed to be someone who's older than you, but um, they're actually a colleague I met here at school. Like I went to a predominantly white school, so it was very few and far between that I met other immigrants and other people of color. So this artist, Maite Nazario, they are a Latinx queer artist from Guatemala. 
And we both, I feel we both immigrated around the same time back in 2013, we went to school together and they just make some really amazing art. They've done so much mural work for the city of Atlanta. And I just think that they need more love, more work, more eyes on their work. I love seeing their work. And they're also just such a sweet person as well. And I feel like, you know, you guys should check them out too for your next volume because you're gonna just keep making more volumes. So Maite Nazario. Yes, I absolutely love that. And yes, we're gonna keep keep them coming. <laughs> <laughs> so much uh, for sharing your heroes. So uh, I think we have maybe one more question and then we'll do another uh, quick scan at our chat. So Aleje, this, uh, this, uh, this next one is for you. Um, so your work in this zine uh, was largely a meditation on radical self-love. Can you break that term down for folks who are unfamiliar with it, radical self-love? And why was it important for you to hone in on this? Um, and wh uh, why is it important for our communities? Yeah, I think everyone has their own definition of like what <clears throat> radical self-love is because we all have different realities and we all live in different realities. And in my reality, that means um, kind of just focusing internally on what is going to make me keep going. And, um, you know, I said it earlier about there's so much that bombard us every day, uh, responsibilities, our jobs, you know, like what's happening in the news, uh, like what's happening down the street, uh, the chores that you have to do, dishes that you have to do. But like radical self-love is about uh, creating the circumstances, the conditions for you to thrive, for you to pause and find out what is the thing that makes you feel good. Um, you know, to me, a lot of the times is just going, you know, I'm privileged to just go to the river, put my feet in it. Uh, and just that feels so healing. And that feels so, and to me, that is like radical self-love, pausing, mm -hmm. uh, taking a moment to, uh, you know, know where I am, uh, what, what is happening around me, but also like kind of shutting that down and just focusing on myself, uh, focusing on like, how do I nurture myself? How do I nurture, uh, you know, that reality at that time? And um, I, I would say that since I wrote, since this event that I wrote about in my piece Go, I have been um, really, really focusing on doing that very often. And a lot of people, you know, like, have shared come up to me sharing like I love your energy I love your you know your glow whatever and I'm like you know just it's it's about really finding the love within yourself and understanding that a lot of the external stuff it's like it, it, it's sometimes you just have to let go of sometimes you just have to focus on yourself and you have to focus on what's important um and and I do I do acknowledge that that's really hard especially in the especially in the lands that we live in, especially in the context of where we are. So, but, and, and there's, there's still time to, and there's still moments where you can find that. You just have to like pause and look within yourself. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Aleje. That, that is so important for our community. And I hope that everyone does take some time to um, appreciate themselves, just a moment for themselves. Maybe you can relax and, you know, read the zine a little bit. <laughs> uh, but thank you so much, Aleje. We did get another question from our folks tuning in. So this, uh, I think we maybe may, might make this our last question unless we get another one that sneaks in. But this next question for both of y'all is, what do you look forward to in the rest of your art and writing careers? Um, so Trudy, how about we start with you? Sure. So I'm right now at this point in my life, I'm just focusing on what serves me. And if it doesn't, I'm not participating in it. I'm not giving it my time, I'm not acknowledging it. So what is really bringing me a lot of joy right now is connecting with people and talking about art. So in the future of my 
art career, I'm hoping to have more conversations like the connecting with more artists, hopefully connecting with more immigrant artists too. That would be a huge plus, regardless of where they're from. And just being able to acknowledge differences and also enjoy things that we have in common, you know. Um, if I feel like if we could focus beyond surface level views and just stereotypes and get down to the meat and boats of things, which to me is like discussing art, trauma, <laughs> emotions, and things like that. Uh, I really look forward to being able to do that with more people in the future. Yeah. Amazing, thank you, Trudy. And Alehe, what's something that you look forward to in your career? I, one of the, <laughs> The, one of the things that I realized after uh, writing this piece was that um, I am ready to welcome all the gifts. I'm ready to welcome all of the gifts that come my way. Um, and that is what I'm looking forward to. And yeah, that's it really. Like there are, and I'm, I'm for looking forward to finding more lessons in my writing and, um, and sharing that with people. Love it. Love it. And, uh, you know, I want many folks to bless both of y'all with tons and tons of gifts, tons of opportunities. How can folks get in touch with y'all? How can they find y'all? If y'all want to plug anything that y'all have coming up, um, let's start with Trudy. Find me on Instagram, on the internet. I put my, I'm trying to put myself out there. So if you just look up my name, you can find my Instagram, my website, my Behance. And in 2023, I have my second illustrated book coming out. It's a young chil a children's book about a little Black boy who goes on an adventure in space. And that's all I'm going to say about it. It's called Be Me Up. It's by a Black author. His name is Fabian Ferguson. He has several children's books out there. Check him out as well. But 2023, beam me up. Um, check me out. Yeah. That sounds incredible. Yes. Thank you for plugging that. Aleje. Yeah, my you can find me on my social media. You will uh, find posts I'm out post uh, you know, I don't I don't post a lot of writing, but I do like talking to people about writing and art. Uh, my uh, social media is underscore Aleje, it's spelled A-L-E-J underscore M. Um, you will also, uh, like, also love to talk about food systems. Let's talk about food. Uh, let's talk about radishes. <laughs> 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 but yeah, just, just find me on social media, hire me, pay me, I don't know, yep. <laughs> Hired immigrant artists, please. Yes. <laughs> Love that, love that, and, and I really look forward to your next your next written piece about radishes. <laughs> it's on the works. <laughs> well, thank you both so much for being a part of today's live stream to talk about the zine. Again, for any of you folks at home, um, if you haven't already signed up on our website to get the physical copy, make sure you do that because we do have about 3,000 copies that we're giving away. So make sure you get in there. Um, if you have immigrant friends, um, if you have classmates that you wanna share this with, take them to the website or have them text the keyword zine to 877-877. Uh, we've got um, a lot more uh, promo for our zine coming y'all's way, uh, but we're so thankful to all of y'all for tuning in um, to meet our special guests, Trudy and Aleje. Uh, Trudy and Aleje, thank you both so much again for joining us tonight. And we hope that all of y'all continue to join United We Dream as we unveil more, even more writing and art that's made uh, by immigrants for immigrants. And please continue to join us in defining immigrant identity and immigrant culture. We can't do it without you. It's gonna take all of us. Um, thank you all again, and I hope you'll have a marvelous night. Thank you. Thanks thank for you having all. us. Thank you. Thanks. Bye, y'all. The zine made by us and for us is back. 
We're leading a cultural revolution for over a decade.